Hello folks, today I thought I'd do some videos on Tahoma 2D, uh, really about drawing with vector and raster tools, kind of explaining how I go about doing it, the procedures that I use, and just kind of make some cool little pictures and showcase just my method of work. Uh, if you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know and let's get started. Thanks. All right, we're going to switch over to Tahoma. And first, we're going to make a vector level. So we'll just name this level vector like that. And normally I hit B for the brush and I set my tool to be minimum size to max size to, I do use accuracy and smoothing and I also leave snap on. The reason for this is it allows me to create just really smooth lines because of that smoothing. So I can create some really smooth, fun shapes like this. And then with snapping turned on, you'll see here how it actually snaps to the lines, right? Like this. Yep. And then I use S, you know, to select, you can delete, you can move, you can resize. So let's say we draw a shape like this. We can select it with S, resize, hold shift to constrain. We can rotate, we can hit C to grab Bezier points and move. And I'll explain all this a little bit more in detail. Uh, but let's just draw, I don't know, like a little, like a little tree, a little scene with a tree. So we'll just kind of create this little shape like this and we'll go ahead and cap it off now you'll notice here that i'm drawing outside of the frame you can draw outside of the frame with vector with raster it kind of caps at the edge uh, but with vector you can draw outside so i'll come in here and we'll just make some little i don't know little bushes like this i'll actually go and you can see i'm just using the brush tool and we're just gonna draw in what would be a little bush shape Right, we'll draw on another one here. Good. And I just want to express like when I'm making these shapes, it's all about just kind of creating. With vector, you can go in, you can select these, sort of like that. You can move each segment. Again, you can resize, you can redo the stroke size. There's a lot of different ways to manipulate vector once you've created it. So don't worry too much. Just kind of create and then you can play with it. We'll make some trees here. Uh, we'll have it about this tall, I'd say. We'll have it snap to that, and then we'll just do the same thing. We'll just make a little tree at the top, kind of like so. And then over this, we'll just do a little pattern, sort of like that, right? Now, one cool thing is if you hit E, you can, in the drop down, you can choose segment. You see what that does? It actually deletes those little segments right there like that, which is a real nice way. Like if you wanted to delete that, it'll clean those lines up. Then if I hit B, I'll just create some little, you know, little details in the tree, little things like this, you know, whatever it is you're looking for in the tree, just kind of create some details. And then on the, the trunk, we'll just put a few small, nothing too crazy. We'll just put in a few small details here. Good, nice. Now we'll do another tree in the back to kind of show you how to do some sort of perspective, like some shading in the rear. So we'll do another tree back here and we'll kind of just close it in and we'll just kind of draw like that. Now we're going to fill that by hitting F for the fill tool and we're going to fill that with the black. Now for the front, I think we'll make a new color over here and I think we'll drag into like a blue. We'll do a dark blue and then we'll do a lighter blue. We'll go even lighter. There you go. Now for the bushes down here, we we'll use the brighter. And for this, we'll use that darker. And if we cut that segment off, you can see how we're already starting to develop a scene. <clears throat> I might go back, grab the brush and kind of just, you know, fill in these little, add in little things, put some little sticks coming out of the bushes, so forth and so on. You could do you know, give the effect of another bush back here if you wanted to. You could kind of do things like that, make it a little darker with the fill in. A lot of different things you could do with that. But this gives you a real quick look at how I would do, you know, sort of a vector. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a smart raster level. And the reason we're going to do smart raster, if you noticed how these colors here in the color swatch, if I go to change this color, it'll change all the colors on the scene because they're linked, right? If we do a smart raster level rather than a regular raster level, it also gets that color changing. So we'll go raster. 
I will hide the vector. And on the vector layer, we're going to hit B for the brush and do the same thing. And you'll notice with the smoothing on, I can do the same effect. You know, I can sort of like this. And you'll notice this does not draw off of the scene. It is capped at the edges here. But we'll create the same sort of scene. We'll just kind of come in here. And you'll notice there's no snapping, right? So you just got to sort of eyeball this. We'll drop a bush in here. We'll do the same thing over here that we did with the vector scene. And we'll just kind of create that. Good. And we'll go ahead and put that one in the back like we did over there. And for the tree, we'll just do like we did in the other one. We'll just kind of drop this in. Whoops. Good enough. Now here, if we hit E, there is no segment selection. So we have to actually use a regular eraser. Now, you're probably wondering, what are the pros and cons between vector and raster? Coloring in raster can be a bit easier, creating the shading, creating the effect that you're looking for, than it can be in vector. Vector can be a little tricky to get the fills right, because the vector fill tool don't work quite as effectively as the raster fill tools. You kind of got to mess with them a bit, but they do work. And I'll showcase the difference here in just a second, once we kind of clean this up. Good. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just add some minute detail down here on the tree trunk. Good. And then we'll put that other tree in the background and we'll treat this. Basically, we're going to recreate the scenes and then we'll go into some shading. All right. Here, here, and then we'll come right out of here. And I'm just eyeballing this. They will not be exact, but they're just going to be somewhat close. All right. We'll fill this one in like we did the last one. We'll create that rough shade of blue that we did last time we'll create that lighter blue right now one thing you're going to notice is because we did <clears throat> smart raster again the colors are linked so let's say we wanted to change the tops of the trees to pink there we go it will change all those fills simultaneously we can also come back hit b and do the same thing you know we can just do some small details and things like this but the big difference between vector and raster is if I want to change this, I have to physically delete this. Now, if we hit E right now, we're on lines. You can set it to just areas, lines, or lines and areas. And what that means is, if I come in right now, you'll notice it's only getting that line. If I go like this, it's getting the area. If I set it to both, then obviously it's going to do both. And that is useful because you can just delete lines if you want. So if you wanted to come in and delete this, but leave the fill for whatever reason, you can do that. Now, we're going to discuss coloring, shading, so forth. The easiest way I've found to shade and color in raster is if we come in and we choose the smart raster paint tool, you'll notice it. If we hit this lock alpha button right here, we check it, it'll stay within the confines of the shape. So let's say we take this and let's create a new color just for the heck of it. We'll create like this pink. And if we do this, you'll see what this does, right? It's actually staying within the confines. So it makes it really easy to come in and shade this object with another color. Now you'll notice it's getting all the fills. That's because what it's doing is it's coloring all the fills for this, this shape here. So you, you know, you gotta be a little careful with it. And one thing I found is you can come back and you can easily choose like the light color and just sorta see that. You can just sorta clean it up if you wanna make it look a little tighter or whatever, what have you. Um, but this is really useful because it allows you to sort of get a quick shade or highlight. So let's say we did a lighter version of this pink. Same thing. You see how it's going to sort of, you know, highlight the tops of the trees there. Um, this is really useful because it makes it really easy to sort of shade and color and create that sort of depth of field look. Now with vector, if we turn this on, one of the useful things about vector is that it is resizable, meaning we could select, you know, any of these and we could just resize the strokes for the entire picture right here and you'll see that changing or we can select you know certain parts of the stroke like for example here and we can come up here and change this to like a five you see how it's changing that other thing is you see this we can just select this shape we can rotate it we can move it we can you know spin it we can stretch it all those different things so this is where vector, you can sort of make changes to the lines after you've created them, as opposed to raster, which 
means, you know, basically I can't just grab this line and move it. You know, I have to actually erase it and redraw it. Or, you know, you could come in like this and you could move it like this, but then you have to come in and you have to delete and clean up and so forth. But I mean, it is possible. It's just a matter of what method you want to draw in. Um, I am currently using both. I do enjoy vector more than raster, but I'm learning to appreciate the, uh, you know, the abilities and the different functionalities that I do have in raster. So hopefully this kind of explained my processes. I'm just kind of trying to make some quick videos and show people what I do and how I do and sort of things like that. Just little mini tutorials. Um, I do draw with a mouse. I don't use the drawing tablet for those that are wondering. It is possible to do this kind of art with a mouse if you do choose to. Um, and if you guys have any questions with this video, anything related to what I've done, please just let me know. Um, one thing I want to mention is I will be moving soon. So my videos and live content will be slowing down a bit until we get settled and things get back on track, but, uh, we will be back. We'll be doing some more content. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you so much. Have a good one.